Ever have that feeling? Like you're being watched? Maybe by a giraffe? A giraffe that's secretly trying to steal your spotlight? Yeah! If you want to fight, fight with me! Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. You might notice that I'm in a slightly different setup, and that's because the power is out. Just all of a sudden, I got all set up to film, and JSU, the power is out, and is going to be out for the rest of the day. This month, I am starting a brand new series to my channel that includes monthly favorites. This is my chance to talk to you, catch up with you, let you know some of the things that I'm seeing in the bassoon world that are new to me, um, or that I've seen recently uh, making the rounds, and then share those with you guys. So first off, we're going to start out with blogs. Uh, blogs that I've read in the last month that I found inspiring or thoughtful. The first of these was by William Short, who plays with the Metropolitan Opera, and he wrote this great blog post about musicians and how when they win the big auditions, sometimes we can put them on pedestals, and it's great that we have heroes, but to recognize that uh, they're human. And it was so thoughtful and such a it came from his heart. You could really tell in the blog that it came from his heart. Um, and it it goes back to what is art and um, also the human element of art and why we listen to live performances. In my opinion, that's part of the human experience. Um, so anyway, I highly suggest you read his blog post. I will link it in the description box um, that is down below this video. And while you're there, you might want to surf around some of the other things that he has on his website. He does have some great read making resources and a fantastic quote about bad reads and um, not necessarily looking at a read that doesn't work as a failure but that as a release because when you let it go you never have to deal with that read again um it just literally the way he wrote it i i laughed and i laughed out loud it's not like lol no i i really laughed out loud so um did enjoy many of the aspects of his website if you're not familiar um, i suggest you get familiar because it was a good time the other article that um, maybe you've already seen, uh, I caught it twice on Facebook, at least maybe three times, was by uh, Joey Grimmer, or Grimer, I'm not sure how to say his name, um, but it deals with traveling and the agony of ivory. And if you've watched my purchasing my heckle bassoon video, you know that my heckle bassoon, when I purchased it, did have ivory on the bell. Um, luckily, I was able to get that instrument out of the country for other repairs and then the law was passed and I replaced it in the process of having other repairs done. Um, but this article, The Agony of Ivory, takes you through what happens if you do have ivory on your instrument um, and the passport that you need to have for the instrument, the dates and times that you can travel and only the cities that you can enter so that you can have your instrument uh, appropriately go through customs. When that seems like too much work, the author actually does have the uh, ivory removed from the bell of his instrument. And there's this really cool YouTube video showing the removal of the ivory of the bell. It's just, I totally geeked it out and enjoyed that just a little bit too much. But I love to see action shots like that. So um, if you missed that one, that is another great one. Um, to keep up to date on the ivory situation and how it directly impacts musicians and instrumentalists and as well travel. I have to say that I have a favorite thread. Um, this favorite thread has made an appearance on Instagram quite some time ago, but um, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that I was looking every month to make a read out of a certain type of cane because I catalog my reads with the thread colors. Um, and that I just wanted to make all of the same type of read just so I could try to use this color because it's this beautiful hyacinth blue. It is not blue, it is not purple, it's just perfectly in between and it just feels so magical. Um, I picked this up at Mark Chudnow. Uh, Mark Chudnow does a lot with oboe supplies and when I was looking to purchase some for the Double Reed Studio, I picked myself up some too. So I believe this is the light blue, it might also have been called sky blue but it 
it's gorgeous. Um, it is FF thread, it is nylon, but I do have to say that the Chud Now thread is ever so slightly different than threads that I've gotten from like RDG or Midwest Musical Imports um, in the fact that this thread feels stiffer. Um, so it's less likely to slide around as you are wrapping your reeds. And I also enjoy that aspect about it too. I had two favorite bassoon memes of the month. Uh, this is probably totally arbitrary, but I, I would love a good meme. And one of them that I loved was Tom and Jerry. And of course you have the little mouse that is stealing the uh, cat's reed. Uh, my brother and I grew up with Tom and Jerry and we would always play um, like Tom and Jerry because we would watch them on cartoons all the time. Um, it hit a little bit home for me, so I loved that one. And then there was this also fantastic meme that I found, you know, that includes rock and roll. And if you follow me on Instagram, you are probably already familiar because I posted it on there as well. This next one is maybe not bassoon oriented, um, but it's very driven by my own personal career and what I see happening in my own career. And this next one is my favorite emotion. And you guys might wonder why I'm including a favorite emotion, but as artists we need to constantly stay inspired and driven. And that part of staying inspired and driven is being in touch with our emotions because they can often guide us. So this month, my favorite emotion is jealousy and envy. And I know, I know what you're thinking. You're like, this is the most ridiculous. I have to say that I think that jealousy and envy, they go hand in hand and that this emotion gets such a bad reputation and it doesn't deserve a bad reputation. Because for myself, oftentimes I'm a little bit unsure of what step I need to take next or what I truly want, um, and then the willingness to commit to what it is that I want. And I have found that jealousy and envy is the fastest way to know exactly what I want. Because if I see somebody else that has something that I desire, I find I get just that little twinge of like, oh, I want that. And it's a little bit of jealousy, maybe a little bit of envy. And immediately I know that is what I want. I don't have to second guess myself. I don't have to wonder if it's right for me or if it's the right path. It tells me where my desires are. So I don't know how you guys feel about jealousy and envy, but I think that jealousy and envy have gotten a bad rap and that as I am developing, I am figuring out what I want and then how to best get there. But first I have to decide to commit to what I want and those two emotions are the ones that help drive that forward. To stay inspired, I have had little moments of playtime and fun. I did take a moment and go thrift store shopping in August and um, I ended up picking up some light up flamingos. They're so god awful tacky. Um, but I absolutely love them and what I did is I placed them in the plants around my uh, meditating giraffe and they lighten the mood because they're lights and they are so playful and lighthearted and they also remind me of what it's like when I meditate or when I'm practicing that I'm trying to go to a very quiet place but there are all of these dancing flamingos around me in my mind and that you know that's part of the magic as well so um, little things that have kept me inspired this month Okay, I would love to get some feedback from you guys if you like the idea of having a monthly favorites of things that I have found interesting. Um, if you would, leave me a comment down below. If you liked this video, do take a second and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up with me, be sure to uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all of those. They're available to you and they're linked in the description box down below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye! Okay, so let's dig in. I purchased a cobalt case. Uh, the cobalt case is great because it offers the backpack function, but also the ability to carry it like it's a briefcase.